Good morning, everyone. Josh is severe weather. Happy Sunday to you. Hope everybody's had a great weekend so far. Uh, we are going to talk about the tropics here and things to watch in the coming weeks as we're expecting to end this quiet period we're in and head into a more active pattern for August, as predicted at the beginning of this season. Here's a look at the areas we need to be watching pretty closely. Uh, a trio of disturbances that have moved into the main development region of the Atlantic Ocean. <clears throat> and some possible solutions for the first couple here as we head into next week, around next weekend, maybe for the Caribbean into the Southeastern United States. So we're gonna take a look at what's going on here. And uh, let me refresh this for you guys. Right now, nothing of major concern. We do have the first area we're gonna be watching that has a 40% chance of forming. And I'm gonna talk about that mostly here. In the Pacific, we do have a couple of disturbances as well. We finally got a storm last week, Bud, which is now uh, basically dissipated between Mexico and Hawaii. And the Western Pacific is quieter for the time being as things are going to be pulsing more towards the Atlantic here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we do have a few uh, invest areas to keep an eye on, but nothing that's developing for the time being. So here's a look at the area of concern. Uh, right now, we're up to 0% chance for formation between now and Tuesday morning. However, after Tuesday morning through next week, and especially towards the end of next week and over the weekend, we do have a 40% chance for development. This is trending upwards, which means we need to be watching it. But right now, still uh, some uncertainty as it is a little bit of time away. Here's a look at ocean water temperatures and the anomaly from the average. So the departure from average here and pretty much the entire Atlantic remains above average especially the North Atlantic here off of the uh, Canadian Maritimes here. Uh, but the main development region here generally uh, running between one and three degrees Celsius above average. You don't really see any place in the Atlantic that's running cooler than average, except maybe just small pockets here between Bermuda and the Caribbean and just off the Texas coastline where waters are typically very warm and warm enough to support tropical activity and off the Delmarva and, and the last two, because we've just seen a lot of rain lately and that's kind of cooled things off. It's kept the uh, sunlight from warming things up. Here's a look at the Atlantic Basin right now and you can see uh, one disturbance, two disturbances, and the bigger one that just came off of the African coast. And uh, taking a look into the future, these two have a chance of kind of pinwheeling around each other and merging somewhere up in here as we get into next week. And I'm gonna talk about that here in just a little bit. Uh, how that's going to happen. The rest of the uh, the rest of the basin is actually pretty quiet. We do have this front draped across the western Atlantic. We may see a little area of low pressure form and head towards New England here by the beginning of next week. And I will talk about that. I don't think it's going to get into any kind of tropical mischief, but it will be something that'll bring some impacts into Massachusetts and southern New England. We also have another storm system here, which is moving down into Texas and into the Western Gulf. And we've got this moist inflow bringing a lot of rain into coastal Texas. Uh, but at this point, no tropical development is expected. We're looking great across Eastern Caribbean. We do have this trough uh, moving through the Western Caribbean. So a lot of monsoonal moisture here over Central America. And we may see something move uh, into the Pacific that has a chance of developing here as we get into next week, but no threat to land at that point. Excuse me. Uh, we, here's a look at the uh, water vapor image and you can see for the time being, things are still not super favorable for development anywhere in here and definitely not in here or in here, but we are expecting that to change here as we get into next week. Um, these two systems here, you got this one and this one. See, this one's kind of overpowering. You can kind of see the trough here. It's going to come up into here and kind of draw this one up into it. Uh, so we're going to see somewhat of a merge here into maybe a more substantial system towards the middle of next week as it approaches the uh, Leeward Islands and the Virgin Islands. Uh, so this is kind of going to be the area we need to keep an eye on here later next week, probably Thursday into Friday, as some of the models are hinting. This one down in here has just come off of Africa. And down the road, it is something we're going to need to watch as well. Right now, my models aren't exactly certain on what's going to happen with it. And most don't show it developing. But um, being that there will be an avenue for more rising motion in here in this region, we do certainly need to keep an eye on it down the road. So that's what we're looking at on the water vapor image. Here's a closer look here off the Atlantic coast. This is my title image. This is cyclonicwx.com. And you can see while we do have a lot of dry air in this portion of the Atlantic, there's a pocket underneath here where this trough will have an opportunity to send a couple of disturbances into a more favorable environment for development. Uh, so that's what we're going to be watching here. 
Here's a look at the overall uh, look, and this is zonal wind anomaly. Basically, let me simplify this for you guys. The areas in purple uh, are the areas where wind shear is going to be lower than average and divergence will be above average, meaning air that is going to be rising is going to have a chance to spread out and storms will have a chance to form. Now, we're not going to see that happening across the uh, northeast, uh, but we are going to keep an eye on what's coming through here in the, in the uh, eastern Atlantic because as we head into next week, you'll see a trend towards more favorable conditions for storms to be able to grow. And then as we get to the middle of the month of August, this is the 10th through the 17th, you'll see the main development region is looking a lot more favorable than average. And that trend continues into the Caribbean and the Gulf as we get to the 17th to 24th. And finally, the last week of August, uh, as we head towards uh, the prime of hurricane season, we see below average amounts of upper level uh, wind shear and uh, wind shear anomaly, a zonal wind anomaly. And that trend continues into September. So uh, bottom line is that even though we've had the break now, uh, we've had the dry, stable air, we've had the wind shear, it's not going to stay that way too much longer. As we get into the second half of August, things are going to pick up quickly. Here's a European extended range forecast now showing a better than 50% chance of a tropical cyclone to form near or north of Hispaniola and Cuba, and especially towards the Bahamas, maybe even southeastern Florida. So this is going to be next week, uh, the following week. That threat's going to shift up the East Coast here and into the Southeast. So greater than 40% chance of a tropical system impacting the Carolinas, maybe the Southern Delmarva, greater than 30% chance here from the Mississippi-Alabama border on through Northern Florida. So what this means is that there's certainly an opportunity for something to form into at least a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm. And uh, the time frame for potential impact is going to be the week after next, uh, between the 5th and the 11th. Uh, the following week, we don't just completely kill things off. Now, certainty level drops because we're farther into time, but you can see there's still going to be multiple threats here, potential, uh, multiple potential threats, I should say, um, across the central Atlantic and across the western Atlantic. And even things may start ramping up in the Gulf here. And uh, chances are actually higher for the kind of the last week, I guess the 19th through the 25th of August for something again off the southeastern coast and you can see it's looking busier than ever uh, in the main development region which means we need to watch in the gulf and in the caribbean as well towards the end of the month of august ocean heat uh, ocean heat content tongue twister there uh, remains uh, very high especially across the caribbean and the southern gulf uh, but still supportive of potentially a stronger tropical system near the bahamas and even up into the outer banks area or at least just offshore the outer banks uh, so this is well above average. This is more than you would typically see in any season uh, as these amounts here are running 150 to 200 kilojoules per square centimeter, which is pretty crazy. Here's a look at the ensemble. And what this is going to show us is where the ensembles are showing some possible development. And you can see maybe just two areas to watch later in the week, one near north of Puerto Rico, the other in the eastern Pacific. As we scroll this forward, you'll see these chances continue here and a system could form near the Bahamas or north of Hispaniola on Friday or early on Saturday. And the ensembles typically say it could be a threat to Florida, the Eastern Gulf or the Southeastern coast here next weekend, about a week from today. Uh, the certainty is not super high. You can see this chance is 20, 30, maybe 40%. Uh, but the signal has continued to show up on my last few models. In fact, if you go back a day, you'll see the trend is a little bit more to the right, but the trend is actually growing for a, a better chance for something here. Uh, we've gone from 15% to 25% on average here. So let's take a look at individual ensembles. This is the European, which has shown the most consistent signal. I don't think the GFS is there yet, um, and it may be behind on this. It may be playing catch up, but take a look here. Um, we do have this weak system heading towards New England by tomorrow. I'll talk about that at the end of the video, but here's our next system, which could try to form as it moves towards Puerto Rico here Wednesday into early Thursday. Now, unlikely to move into the Caribbean, there is a chance some of these ensembles are showing it moving over Hispaniola, which would hurt its chances for developing. If it goes near or over Haiti, it's probably not going to form. Or if it does, it may end up in the Gulf rather than on the southeastern side of the United States or on the, on the Atlantic side, I should say. Uh, but the majority of this guidance does bring it up towards Florida or over the Bahamas, the time frame being next Saturday. And we do start to see a few um, solutions here that are a little bit more robust, but they are farther to the east. So the more it goes to the right of Bahamas, the better chance it becomes a stronger system. 
but also the better chance that it avoids the eastern United States. So there is the opportunity for this to be a, I don't want to call it a fish storm, but one that gets close, but not close enough to making landfall. And you can see several of those solutions curl it back up the east coast and don't actually make landfall at least before next Sunday night. There are quite a few solutions, though, that do go over Florida or bring it up into the Carolinas as well. And if you take the average of the models, it is very close to the Outer Banks, with the time frame being uh, probably the 5th and 6th of August, so Monday and Tuesday of the week after next. And uh, we do need to watch it all the way up into Atlantic Canada if in case it does recurve, uh, although some solutions do bring it towards Florida as a weaker system. Uh, this is the GFS model, and you will see here in a minute, it is not as excited about the chance for development here. It's got just a few solutions going across the Bahamas here next Friday night into Saturday. A couple solutions coming up into the Carolinas, but nothing recurving. Um, as we go off into time, there's a couple of weak solutions in the Gulf as well. And you can see some just very meager potential for development here over uh, the main development regions. So this is a big mess. The, the signal's not super strong at this point on the GFS, but the European uh, remains my model of choice because I think it's handling this better. Uh, it's more consistent. And you can see here as we head towards next Saturday evening, uh, generally speaking, a Bahamas system, but a few solutions are going into Florida as a typically weaker system um, as a tropical storm, but a few solutions are a little bit stronger here. Um, making uh, potential waves over the Bahamas, but potentially staying east as well, which would be the favored solution if you're on the east coast. That means we would have a close call, but no hit. So again, we've got a lot of time here. Um, I do want you to just know that these ensembles are going to change and the certainty level is super low, but I'd rather not ignore this at all. I think it doesn't, it doesn't help us if we say, well, the certainty is so low, we're not even gonna talk about it for another week. And then by then it could be a potential issue. Here's the operational European, and you can see a lot of dry air in place, but we do have this moisture envelope here. And if you, if you go back and you see these two features here, here's the one, I'll circle them for you. Oops, find my pen. Here's uh, kind of the two, the two features here, and they kind of merge in this area. As I move this along, you'll kind of see that here. Let me get this off the screen. Oh. You'll see how the two kind of merge here and we actually have a consolidating low. It's pretty weak. This is next Monday. But then as we get to Tuesday, we have a little bit more of a feature and you can see kind of that second feature takes over. Here's the one behind it. It actually is going to run into some drier air and may struggle to develop, at least according to this run of the European. But you can see it's got a chance to spin up into something over the Bahamas. At this point, maybe a depression next Friday and then maybe a storm by Saturday. And the European says it's gonna be a close call for the Outer Banks, but it's going to recurve and get pushed out by the next front, eventually making landfall near, uh, near a Southeastern Newfoundland here as we get to the sixth and seventh. That's just one model though. That's not necessarily gonna be how it plays out. Um, as you take a look here, you can kind of see how things consolidate. And then we actually have a feature to watch on the East Coast, maybe a tropical storm and even a chance it becomes a hurricane as the waters here are very warm. So here's that European operational again, just kind of showing you guys what it's showing here. And again, for the time being, a system that is going to come close enough to the East Coast to be a threat, but this particular run takes it offshore um, and keeps it that way. If you go back a day, uh, all right, I lost my model. Uh, if you go back half a day, you'll see um, that this, in fact, was a stronger system, but closer to North Carolina. And then as you go today, you can see it's faster and weaker, um, making a quicker turn away. Here's a closer view of the Southeast and the Caribbean. You can see formation would be Thursday or Friday. And then here's that turn away from the East Coast. If you look at farther up the East Coast, here's our first feature moving into the Gulf of Maine. And then we get high pressure building. And then as we get to next weekend and beyond, system that's gonna come up close to the East Coast. But model errors this far out are extremely high. And we could see this in the Carolinas, or we could see it not form, or we could see it turning even harder and missing completely. We still need to watch it, though. At this point, all opportunities are on the table for this. This is the control of the ensemble, and you can see it's close to the Outer Banks, but turning away. Uh, here's a look as well up the East Coast, and you can see, again, this is a threat to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. But again, we've got a lot of time before this potentially plays out. The Canadian model uh, is different. Uh, it continues to show a weaker system moving over Cuba, 
next weekend and then moving into the Gulf, but it is trending to the right as well. Here's a closer view of the Canadian. You can see it doesn't really develop until it gets south of Cuba. So the Europeans got it over the Bahamas while it has it over Cuba and turning into the Eastern Gulf. But take a look at the trend on the Canadian. If you go back to a couple model runs ago, this was a threat to the Yucatan and Texas. Uh, the model after it was a stronger system threatening Mobile Bay. And then the latest run now has it towards Panama City. So it is shifting right towards a European. And again, maybe something to watch here for Florida, maybe something for the Carolinas with the time frame being uh, the week after tomorrow, uh, about eight days, uh, so Monday the 5th, or maybe Tuesday the 6th. And the GFS model is completely different from the others, and in my opinion, is behind, behind the times here on this development, but we'll have to see. Maybe it gets it right for a change. Uh, you can see it just has something very weak moving through the Gulf. Uh, if you go back a model, even weaker. If you go back a model from there, uh, again, just nothing too exciting. And then one model run before just doesn't really even develop it. So we'll see if that ends up being right. In my opinion, I don't think it does. Um, I think it's going to play catch up just like it did with Barrel, just like it has with multiple other systems here in recent times. All right, let's take a look at the East Coast here. And you'll see we do have a front that looks like it's going to develop into something uh, low pressure wise here off of uh, the southern portion of New England generally speaking, heading in this direction, but most of the moisture is gonna be on the Eastern side, circulating into Nova Scotia and Maine as we get to tonight and into the day on Monday. Here's a look at what models are doing with it. This is the HER model and you can see it's got low pressure forming, moving Northwest towards Cape Cod here. This would be three or four in the morning tomorrow and then weakening as it comes into Southwest Maine by Monday. You will see there's an upper level feature here. See kind of this red line here. Um, what that does is it pulls this moisture up into New England and keeps things kind of wet tomorrow, especially in the mountains where we may see some enhanced rainfall rate. Here's the wind forecast for it. Not a big deal, but you can see offshore there are some wind gusts that may potentially get to gale force, 50 miles per hour or stronger. And you can see that on the islands here and on Cape Cod, that potential for some stronger wind gusts. It's not going to be tropical, but we may have some kind of similarities to a weaker tropical system as this comes in here. And you can see the rain totals from this are going to start climbing potentially one to two inches on Cape Cod and maybe over parts of Rhode Island and Western and Central Mass as well. And the majority of this is going to come overnight in Cape Cod and during the day tomorrow across Southern New England. So something to watch. Uh, but as always, um, if it is a real threat, I will certainly tell you about it. Um, I appreciate y'all's time today. I hope you have a blessed uh, Sunday and a wonderful weekend. I thank you for your time. Please be safe if you're in New England or if you're in the Caribbean. And as always, I give all the honor and glory to God. Uh, Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And that's the reason that I became a believer, knowing that um, there was so much love for people like me, that even though I was not really worthy, but once I chose God, uh, Christ, because Christ died for me, I would be justified through his blood, redeemed and saved from the wrath that is coming uh, through Jesus Christ. And I pray that is the case for you as well. But please know that um, while you may completely, totally believe something different, you are still welcome here. You are still loved. And I appreciate you. I just feel that it's so important to show people that there is love out there and that they can be redeemed and they can be saved from that wrath, just like millions of others have been and billions of others have been. So I pray you have a wonderful Sunday. And as always, I'll keep you guys posted on the tropics. I don't think too much is going to change for the next couple of days, but I'll be monitoring trends for you. And if there is a real threat, you'll certainly hear from me. Hope you all have a great day. See you soon.